Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In this video I'm planning on showing you how to make different types of WSD translators that can be really useful in different cases. If you don't know what WSD translators can be useful for, you have some examples right in front of me that would be almost impossible to do without WSD translators unless you use a whole bunch of buttons, which can get really annoying and you also have to tell the person using them which buttons does what. And that's the reason you want to use WSD translators, since that means you can just press those buttons on your keyboard and your creations are going to work. I'm also joined by David Baguette, who is an amazing Scrap Mechanic member and has his own YouTube, so make sure to check out his channel. There should be a link in the description as well as a card at the end of the video. Okay, let's get on with the tutorial. Bye bye! Here we have four different designs in front of me. They're all useful in different cases. Some are smaller, some are bigger, some react a little bit faster, and some are more survival friendly. So what you should use is really depending on which scenario you're in. The one you see to the left is the most basic one, and that's the one I would recommend in most scenarios, but it's not always the best. Which is why I'm going to have a tutorial on how to build all of these a little bit later on. The first one is great, both in creative and survival, because if you use an electric or gas engine, then it's going to be really reactive. And that's why it's so good. However, it needs to be spinning around, which might give your build momentum. And also it requires quite a bit of space. It uses the fact that blocks on suspensions lag behind, so then when it starts spinning, the suspension lags behind and therefore the sensors are able to activate it. The second one is extremely cheap to build, which is why it's great in survival, and it also doesn't require that much space, so it's really good for building, for example, inside of your car without looking odd, unlike the first one. It's also really reactive when you first click the button, but then when you release it, it takes a little bit of time before it actually stops pressing down the button. However, it's extremely survival friendly, also works in creative, as well as being great for its size. So this one works by using the fact that the blocks placed on bearings are able to move past the joint of the bearing, but then they want to go back to the bearing. So when this one spins, it's adding a bunch of stress onto this bearing, which makes it able to rotate, but as soon as you stop giving it more momentum, it wants to go back to its original state, which makes the two sensors turn off. The third one can fit into almost any build at all. And it doesn't use any fuel either, which is perfect for survival. But the issue with using controllers is they tend to be a bit jittery, and you have the same issue with this one. W is really reactive and works almost perfect, except sometimes it double clicks, while going backwards is a lot slower and doesn't work that well. But if you're really determined that it can't use up any fuel, then this is the best design. You can also use the first design with the controller, which works almost just as good, but again, that's a lot bigger and requires your vehicle not to move too much. Let's hear David explain how it works. Okay, this one is a basic WA and D converter. It's obviously glitch welded. You can see that here in this block are two sensors inside. These are for the A and D configuration. The W and S configuration does work with the counter spinning part. As soon as the W sensor right here in the top detects the blue one, it counter spins the other part here so that you basically got a rotation to the right as long as the sensor doesn't see a blue block when the sensor does see a blue block it counter spins a different bearing on the bottom here and that causes the whole contraption to stop at this certain angle if you press the S button it is vice versa the final design is extremely useful when you only want W. The reason all the other ones are so slow is because you're trying to fit both W and S into one contraption. But if only W is good for you, then this is perfect. Because it's only really three blocks that you need to make it. And it's extremely fast and always reliable too. So this one uses a mix between one way of doing W translations and another way of doing S translations. The W simply works by having a piston with something on it. And when the piston goes outwards, the sensor detects the screw. And the reason the piston wants to go back is because we have a controller. The seat is hooked up to the controller and the controller is hooked up to the piston. The controller is set to one block on the first slot and also loop mode, which is what makes it go back after you release W. The S works by hooking the seat up to a engine. So when you press S, this tries to spin towards this block and that makes this sensor able to detect it. As well as when you let go of S, because of Scrap Mechanic's bad physics, this controller interacts with the green sensor and it pushes it back. Which is quite a slow way of doing it and you can definitely do it better, but it's a good prototype. 
so when it comes to A and D translators, they're often way more simpler than W and S. Which is why I'm going to be focusing on especially W and S in this video, since A and D translators are really boring. And the best design is often just the most simple one, which is this right here. So how this one works is basically just the bearing is hooked up directly to the seat, which makes it spin whenever you press A and D, and that makes these two sensors able to see the two screws. The reason I have screws right here is just to make the sensing a little bit faster. It would work even without the screws. No. What? <laughs> is that is that a glitch? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense though. <laughs> oh, this works, yeah. But it's way easier with screws since. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep all of that in, who cares? <laughs> this one is based on the inverse, where the sensors always detect the pipes until it rotates. So you can see only when this starts rotating upwards, this one stops sensing it. And because these two logic gates are put on NOR, which means that when this is off, this is turned on. That's why I'm able to sense which direction you're pressing the buttons to. And for this one, I've also had to hook up the connections in the opposite way, since it's reverse, so that you get the reverse of the reverse. Everything you need to build the most basic WS translator is simply just some blocks. I would recommend having pipes, since they look better, but blocks should work too. One bearing, one suspension, one engine, it can be any engine of any type, Controllers work too if you want it to be fuel-less, but the issue with controllers is they like to lock on two certain angles, so it's going to be really inconsistent with how well it works. Which is why electric and gas is always going to be the best option for WS translators. But just letting you know that controllers do work if you're planning on making this in survival and you really don't want to use up fuel. You also need a seat, of course, and then two nuts or screws. I'm currently using screws because I like them more than the, the nuts, but both should work just as well. All we have here is just a simple platform, our seat, and then engine. Let's just hook up the seat to the engine, and then we need to make the actual system itself. We can start by just placing down a bearing, a block, a suspension, another block, two screws. Then we also need sensors, which I completely forgot to mention. We can just place down the sensors anywhere, as long as they detect these blocks. And that should be the entire build finished. All we do is hook up the engine to the bearing, as and you can see when we go into the seats and press W, the one of the sensors activates. If you want it to be more responsive, you can also higher the power of the engine. We can actually make this a bit more compact, as well as a bit better working, even for survival. And the way we do that is by using a shortened suspension. If you haven't heard about shortened suspension, all they basically are is just place down two blocks next to each other, place down your suspension, and then drag blocks from this block inside of this suspension. Now we can break this block next to the suspension, and then we want to drag from this block and drag it onto this block. Make sure not to delete this one instantly, because that can cause the suspension to disappear, so instead just hold on this block and then drag to this block. And now we have a suspension that's one block tall. We can do the same thing with this one, where we just place two sensors on each side, and then our block and screws and this is better because the rotation point is closer to the center than it normally would be and this should be a little bit smaller than the one previously as well as having the center of weight closer to the rotation points if you want to be really professional you can do the same shortened suspension glitch except this time we use a pipe so you can place down a bearing a block another bearing another block and then onto here we want to place a pipe going this way which means that when we place this on the lift, the pipe is going to go downwards. And now we should be able to weld this pipe onto the block. And then delete these two. This is a super shortened version, since you can place your bearing right on here. And that's going to be way smaller. If you want to make it even smaller, you can also replace these three with just a button or a switch. And then again place the sensors down here. If you're planning on using a button or a switch, then it has to spin faster for it to detect at the same rate. Which is why I used screws on this other one. But this one should work perfectly fine too. For this next design, we want to be using a gas engine. And the materials needed for this are a few blocks, two bearings, two screws, and two sensors. We can also use a pipe if we want it to work a little better. Just so things don't clash. But we only need one of them really. To start building, we want to first place down a block, and then place down two bearings, just like this. 
we can already place our sensors right down here. These are the ones that are gonna activate. We can then place our pipe right here. It doesn't need to be a pipe, but if it's a block, then there's a chance when this block spins, it's going to interact with this block, which is why I'm currently using a pipe. You can make this entire thing out of pipes to make it look a little bit better, but it's definitely not necessary, which is why I'm using blocks right now. We then want to place down a block right here and another bearing on top of it. These are all the bearings we're gonna need. Now we want to place this on our lift and drag three blocks, so this row of blocks connects to both bearings. And then we can place down one block on either side, as well as put our screws on top of these. And that should be everything done. Now we can just connect this top bearing to the engine. And as you can tell, it rotates whenever we press W or S. In order to start this build, we need our both controllers facing that way. In the corners, we're gonna place two bearings. On these bearings, we're gonna place our two sensors like this, facing in the opposite direction. We're gonna put them on one and the color mode on. In this corner, we're gonna place a small pipe. On that pipe, we're gonna need a controller. Like this. Then we need on the sides of this controller our two logic gates. One of them is an OR gate, the other one is an AND gate. On top of this logic gate, we're gonna put a sensor facing towards the controller and on this side do the same. We're gonna put these on the color mode too. I choose red at this state here and we're gonna paint the controller red. So on this corner we're gonna place bearing on top of that a small pipe, another bearings, another small pipe, another bearing and a small pipe facing towards this sensor. Then we're gonna hook this up with the red controller and the two bottom controllers also to these bearings here. Also don't forget to paint these in the color you chose inside of these sensors. The next step we're gonna do is opening our interface of the red controller, rotate it like 90 degrees and you're gonna see that the small pipe is facing now towards us. Now we're gonna take a piston and place it on top of that. Now we need to change this bearing from the red controller and do the 45 degrees angle so that the piston is right between these two sensors. Now we need to check our red controller again and set it on 60 degrees in the green direction. Don't forget to check the loop button here. Now we're gonna hook up this right sensor with the bottom controller. This sensor we're gonna hook up with this logic gate and this logic gate and this logic gate we're gonna hook up with the second logic gate. This logic gate, which is the OR gate, we're gonna hook up with the bottom controller. Now we need to connect our bottom controllers. This one is 60 degrees in the green direction and this one is 60 degrees in the other direction. Don't forget to check the loop button here. Okay, now we need to hook it up to our seat right here. These two bearings are for the steering and the red controller is also hooked up with the seat. So this converter is a fully vanilla build and you can build it basically in the survival motors. But please remember that the W key is more responsive than the S key in this case. Everything you're going to need for this fourth design is only at least two blocks of any choice. One piston, one sensor, two screws. You can replace them with normal blocks, but screws makes it just a little bit faster, which is why I'm showing it right now. And a controller to activate the piston. Everything we need to do is just place down one block, place down a piston on the block, place down a screw on top of the piston, place down a block in front of the piston, place down a screw mirror to the other screw, and then place down a sensor facing towards the screws from any direction. And then we also need our controller. And this should be everything we need to build it. Now we just need to hook up the controller to the piston, and then the controller to the seat. And inside the controller, on the first slot, we want to put one as well as putting it on loop. And now if you press W, we should see the sensor activating. But do keep in mind that this design only works for W and not for S or A and D. Uh oh, it seems like you made it to the end of the video. 
I really hope you guys found this video useful and that I showcased most of the designs. I know there's probably some more WSD translators that do work, but these are all the ones that I know of and the ones I've seen people use quite frequently. So these are definitely the ones I would recommend. But if you do know any other interesting design that doesn't use any of these systems, then please do let me know since I would be really curious in getting to know that. Also, big thanks to David for joining me today. So definitely go check out his YouTube channel. But that was everything for today. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> you were standing like yeah, <laughs> so excited that you finished it, and then <laughs> I just thought you forgot about to put it on loop. <laughs> I fell off. You just drive off the screen. Just drive off the screen, and it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's perfect. Wait, wait, I, I, I come back. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>